Okay, now we're back. Sorry, guys. It yeah. was a little technical difficulties, and this always happens on the awareness show. So we were talking about, what were we talking about? Uh, what were we just talking about? Um, oh, the, old, the old wrestlers, what you, we were talking about, uh, how they were talking about you guys not really being a wrestler. and uh, Oh, WWE. Okay, so yeah, we talked about WWE. and. Um, you know, I was talking about how the wrestlers didn't really see us as that. Uh, but I think Glow had an impact on, on the wrestling scene because in W, it was WWF at the time, you had a lot of the girls that were managers, so they weren't quite that glamorous. Uh, and uh, when Glow came out, we were like our own little group. And I think people were drawn to that. So you watch WWF earlier, then you watch Glow. So you got like the, the big guys and then you got the glamorous girls and you got really with Glow, you got all walks of life, you know, on, on the show. So I think that's why people were drawn to it. After you see a bunch of sweaty guys, you can see a bunch of glitter, glamoury women. <laughs> there you go. And, um, yeah, it's a good it, How long did Glow last? How many seasons did it last? It lasted for four seasons, but I've had people also say, there was some other matches that were going towards the fifth season, but like I said, I left to, to have a baby. And so I don't quite know. And the, the good thing about Glow is there are rumors floating and flying around and mystique and what happened and where they go. So I think uh, the way that Glow ended is why, and the mystique about it is why people are like, what happened to it? You know, because it was, we were at the peak of our, you know, popularity. We we're on concert, uh, doing stages we were everywhere like we we're rock stars you know and then all of a sudden it's like poof it's gone and then like we're and and us as glow girls we were waiting for the phone call to come back so we could just go back in and start training and we never got that phone call so i think leaving it kind of like that and that's what i did in the play is uh we had all the girls kind of together and then there was like um a uh, phone ringing and then each girl got like the phone call that glow was over so we kind of did that in the play to show that you know how the girls felt after and that and that was kind of like a true story um we didn't have internet we just had a telephone you know that you pick up and go hello <laughs> there's no internet to say hey glow's canceled what happened so it was kind of just left at that and and that's what i think you know uh, somebody said to me about glow what would have happened if Glow would have gone on? And from what I heard, I heard Vince McMahon from WWF wanted to buy Glow, and Matt Simber said no. Now, I think if Glow was bought by Vince, I think it would have had a total different vibe. I, I don't think, he might have wanted to buy it just to shut it down, who knows? You know, yeah. because there are two different, two different organizations. You can't even compare Glow to WWF. It's just two different types, so. Uh, Glow is more to me like a, they call it entertainment TV, and like a right. variety show, where WWF, it was totally different. So I'm glad, now I am, not, not at the time, I'm, I'm glad the way it, it shut down and just kind of left people going, we want more, we want to see these crazy characters, and, and, and that's, that's why, you know, we did the Glow documentary and Glow Netflix, and now we've got some other things cooking that I think the fans will really like, so. Well, I didn't even know about the Glow documentary. I'm going to have to really keep an eye out. Uh, oh, Matilda, is, Matilda's in it. Look under Glow, the documentary. She's in it. And then you can see all of the Glow girls at the end at a reunion. And then they bring in Mountain Fiji before she passed away. Oh. Get ready. Okay. Grab some snacks. You're going to cry. So it, can I watch it on Amazon? Can we watch it on, uh, where can we watch it? I think if you Google um, Glow documentary, it might be Glow the movie documentary, do that. I know it's on Netflix for a little bit, but it's out there. And you might have to pay $2.09, but it's worth it. It is really good. And you're going to fall all over Matilda again. You guys should make a cartoon out of it. You know, have Glow cartoon figures. Have Did you guys have comic books back then? I know Sunny has her own comic book. She has her own, which is really, really cute. She put me on the cover, and she also has Big Bad Mom on the cover. Um, a few of the other girls, they've gone off and done their own little thing with that. I know the Glow Netflix, they have their comic book. 
I, I'm working on with some people, uh, like I said, that I think the GLOW fans will be very happy. So <laughs> that's kind of been in the works really for the last two years. I feel like we're getting close to it. So it's kind of an exciting time. And yes, Matilda will be a part of it. Absolutely. Well, I actually, if you have, I have a friend who is a graphic designer who does comic books as well as characters. I'm sure if I could mention her name online, uh, you can look her up. She's really good. Her name is Daxi Brody. Mm -hmm. She's the one that did the logo for the awarded show and she did the other comics. Uh, she's, she's into comics and she's, uh, uh, she's got her uh, master's in graphic design. So I always huh. try to, yeah, so she's looking for commission. And I, don't, I know she's going to kill me later for this. She likes she likes <laughs> glow, she likes glow too. So she's a fan of wrestling. And once I tell her what what that this, she's like, her eyes will lit up like a big cat, Cheshire cat. That's how she is. Right. Yeah. And, and so, um, I've been doing podcasts for all nine years. Uh, it's gonna be nine years in August. Wow. And so I, yes, and I think I told you why I started the podcast because um, I got diagnosed at the uh age of 30 because I found out that I had a missing piece of a chromosome called 22Q11. It's like Down syndrome. So you have over 200 symptoms. You have a heart condition, you have TB uh, problems, oh, wow. learning disabilities. Uh, but each person who has it has their own unique style and different uh, uh, issues. For me, I've had three open heart surgeries, ear surgery, mouth surgery. I'm getting ready to have another surgery in two, three weeks. And so uh, it's just that we started this, we want to make people more aware about different causes and different events. And so I got to talking about different celebrities, how you guys talk about glow, you want to bring it back. That's the, that's, that's the cause that, like I like to do. So we talk about cancer, we talk about diabetes, so we just have a good time here at the awareness show. We just have a lot of fun doing it. And, you know, I've yeah. met so many wonderful people come onto the show. Marion Ross from Happy Days came onto the show. Uh, Don Wells from Dragon right. Diamond. So, um, you know, I want to thank my listeners and you guys, for, you know, coming on and saying yes to being part of the awareness show and making it what it is. Um, right. You know, and I get really, I get excited and nervous sometimes when I talk to my guests. I don't know if they're going to say yes. I don't know if they're going to say no. And when I tell my mom, I go, I got Roxy on the uh, on the word of show. How did you do that? I didn't ask. She goes, you said all I did was I asked her. I asked her. Yeah. That was it. Right? I asked her. That's yeah. all it is. If you don't, if you don't ask, like you will never know. So exactly. you just get chance and I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to give her that interview. It'd be my honor to give her that interview. I have to tell you something, though. My my boyfriend has something in common with you, though. He's had one, two, three, like three open heart surgeries. Wow. Uh, he, is, he was a, a two-time world kickbox champion that came back after open heart surgery and ended up winning a, a championship of kickboxing. Nice. So. He just recently had to get a pacemaker put in and a defibrillator. So we've gone through all like the hard stuff. We've gone through a lot. And I'm, like, I'm sure you've gone through too. And it kind of gets just to be a part of your life, right? Like you're right. like us, you don't want the sympathy. You want no sympathy. You want people to be aware. Um, because looking at you, I mean, you look like you could try out for glow right now. So, <laughs> you know, oh, you I just love that. <laughs> Oh, girl, you'd be good. Just got to get the wrap down. Got to get the wrap down. You know, I'll, uh, maybe with the, I could just do the hand wave and stuff like that. I don't know. <laughs> well, maybe always, surprise me and do your own wrap, okay? <laughs> yeah. I've always wanted to be in a ring, you know, just to see what it looks like because I like wrestling and um, I'm not the type of girl who, you know, I see all these different changes like the disc of hazard, you know, they're taking the disc of hazard off, yeah. picking, you know, it, it's changing. And, uh, you know, Glow was so much fun back in the 80s. And, you know, that's when they were first coming out. And right. you see, if you see the Glow doc, uh, the Netflix, 
to Iggy, like, we want more, we want a movie out of it, or we want, you know, cartoons, or, okay, you should. I was oh. staring at those for the longest time. I right. was looking at <laughs> This is a Funko Pop. You guys should talk to Funko and get yourself Funko, Funko size. One day, one day, Michelle. <laughs> We're working on it. <laughs> That's where the money is right now. It's these Funko Pops. It really? Is yes. It is addicting. So, um. What you do you have they, there? You have like 10 or 20 or are they all over the room? <laughs> they're all over the room. <laughs> yes. good for you. That's a good hobby. That's good. I, I only collect different types. I like the 80s. I like, you know, I'm old school. So, because I. I you know seventy. I was born in seventy six, so we got you know. I have seen all the changes coming around, and, and yeah, I was born in nineteen sixty two. I'm, I'm going to show you something that I have. Okay, ready for this? Okay. Do you see this? Yeah. And that that is yeah. total. Oh wow! One original. That's one of her original outfits, right here. Yeah. Look at that. I'm, wow. I'm holding on to them and keep very, oh wait, there's her, this is what she used for her Fritzy. Remember that? Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. I have it here, so I'm holding it. What else do we have here? Oh, we've got like her jacket. I've had her boots, but there, I'm saving them for her. I'm just storing them until she's ready to grab them and put them back on again, I think. <laughs> you should guys do like, maybe like a farewell, uh, what do you call it? Not, not a farewell, but reunited match, you know, 35 years later, back in the day. I'm on that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say too much, but I'm very, very excited, and um, it's something long in the making, and it'll be with it, and I think the timing is right with everything going on. It's just, I think people need something that's not so serious, that is just fun, you know, it's kind of like watching like the 90 day fiance, you just kind of just go there and veg and not worry about things. And then you go back to life and deal with all the other stuff, you know? So yeah. I think it's great that a lot of us still keep in contact with each other. And that's, to me, that's like the magic with all of it. Like we did this back in the eighties. I did it for right. two years. Some of them did for four, um, but we are still talking to each other. Sunny is, is like my best friend. Matilda is my best friend. And those, those are my girls. And then we have Gremlina, who was born with Turner syndrome, and she had a disability, but she turned that disability into something positive. And she is smarter than a whip, no pun intended, because she does use a whip. <laughs> and, you know, you have MTV and uh, Helena, who is Daisy. We've done so many, and Dallas and Angel and... Oh, I've gotten a lot of the girls together for NostalgiaCon, an 80s NostalgiaCon. I think we had an Ashley from Tina, Ashley Cartier. Um, oh, she wow. was there too. So we all still keep in, in contact with each other. And, and that's, a, to me, it kind of, it's like a league of their own. You know, like, you know, when they're looking at the pictures from the past. But when we get together, it's more like, okay, girls, let's go party. <laughs> We think we're still like in our 20s. Nobody told us that we had to get older, that we're going to get older. We refuse to get older. Like it's not going to happen. Girl. I'm going to say you're going to be like no, the golden girls. I, I girl call the glowed in girls, not the oh. golden girls, the glowed in girls. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And I think this, this is like one of the, the exciting interviews I've had, uh, you know, because I really passionate about wrestling and I could sit there for hours watching old school wrestling. Some of the new yeah. stuff that they have now, it's like, mm, it's okay. That's all I'm yeah, going to say. I know, I know. I, I think, yeah, Glow is so unique. It was just, so, yeah. But you probably love the 80s. I love the 80s. My kids were like, God, I guess I wish we were back in the 80s. I'm like, especially now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Back, yeah, yeah you don't have to. Be the they're, like, they're like, they're like, they're like, you know, born and raised. Yeah, raise yeah there's, yeah, yeah, I mean, it was just a really cool time, and nobody, you know, it was just so colorful, too. 
it was colorful. <laughs> and now it's just kind of, you know what, you're cool if you're just wearing black, black. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to be Perfect. careful what you say. You got to be careful what you say nowadays because then you're going to defend somebody else. And you don't want that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because so, you know what? Like, you know, even I look at like comics, they're um, actually watching what they have to say too. And I don't think right. it'd be kind of to be a comedian this time. Because, you know, I don't think people are really out to hurt people's feelings. It's just, just times are really, you know, it's kind of crazy right now. And you just, yeah. you know, I don't have, I don't, I'm not racist anyways. And I don't think, you know, anything bad about anybody. And I don't want to. I want to believe that the world is just one beautiful place. But, you know, things are happening. Nothing yeah, really to do about it. But that's why I'm here. I'll do interviews. If I can brighten somebody's day up. Okay. Yep. And, so, and that's why, you know, you're doing interviews. Yep. I'm doing the interviews. And like I said, I'm going to be taking some time off uh, in July for three weeks. And I always have a time to, uh, you know, re re uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Rewind to take the time for myself, you know. I always take the yeah. time. And, uh, you know, I've been quarantined in the, in the, the house for like, four months now because I, you know, I couldn't really go anywhere because I'm at high risk and they're like, no, right. you gotta stay home. And I'm like, okay, I'm being bored. I want to go out. And, you know, no, you, you know. don't. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm stuck. I don't know what I want to do. So, and then I started watching, uh, I started reaching out to people and then I was like, okay, I'm going to get more involved in my podcast and do a little bit more. And so I figured with the Zoom, I'm able to now convert it into an MP3 format, and my listeners right. are now able to listen it to a podcast. So right. It's cool. And you know, uh, I just—it's just like I said, so many different things are changing. They got rid of El they got rid of Elmer Fudd's gun. Uh, you know, oh yeah. Um, yeah. You know because. Yeah, I don't know. It, I don't know why. Yeah, you can ask me, but I, if you look back at a lot of things, um, just kind of wipe out everything then because it's going to bother somebody somehow. Uh, but when I look at things that are historical or things that are, you know, from our past, it's our past, you know. Right. If anything, everybody just moves forward with this. That's in a perfect world. That's what I'm hoping. Oh, we can only hope. So my question is, a lot of people want to get into, I guess, the acting and entertainment part and wrestling part. What would you say to the listeners how to get into the, the business? What would you recommend? Would get, to get into wrestling? Yes. Or huh. to, the, the, the entertainment business as well. Oh, the entertainment business. Okay, that would be a, a question for Mary Kennedy, who's a good friend of mine. She played New Fiona on Shameless. Uh, if you watch Shameless, and she teaches a lot I'm of classes. So, yes. huh? I'm friends with her on Facebook, yes. Oh, yeah, she's great. She's funny. <laughs> um, so I listened to her, and, you know, she's been in the business for 20 years. And, right. and so my thing is, like, I never wanted to be in the entertainment business. I like being behind the scenes. I like creating. I like putting things together, which is why I did three cruises and a play and why I'm working on stuff now because I see things that are like, oh my gosh, I know the people would love this. Let's do this and that and that. And that's kind of always how I've been. To be in the entertainment business from listening to Mary, it takes thick skin. It takes a lot of no's. I, like her and I worked on something and we were getting rejections. And the you know, first time I heard a rejection, I was like, oh, wow, this hurts. <laughs> and then we got another one. I'm like, okay, it, it stings, but okay, I'm okay. Third one. All right, bring it on. Bring it on. Yeah, yeah. Bring those rejections on. And then, you know, and she's like, oh, I go through that every day. And then, you know, I could try out for something a hundred times to get one thing out of it. And then I forget about all the rejections. And you remember that one time. So you got to remember that you got to have a thick skin. Um, and listening to her, like for kids, uh, the parents are important, but also, like with her, the teachers are very, very important. And as an adult, I can't give any advice, but I would, I, I wouldn't want to do it. I want to be on the other end. I want right. to be on the end 
where, because where I can remember when I tried out for Glow, I could see something in that person and go, yeah, that person is perfect for this. That one person that didn't think they'd ever make it. Like, that's what I like. I like the underdog. So I'm good at spotting the underdogs. I think that's great. Now, my last question is, can they follow you on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, TikTok? I don't know if you're doing TikTok yet. My kids would kill me if I did a TikTok. So <laughs> because I know they would kill me, it makes me want to get up there and do a dance and embarrass them. So, <laughs> but thanks for, for reminding me. Uh, who knows? Maybe TikTok one day. Uh, I'm actually on Twitter under Roxy Aster one and wait, uh, yeah, and Instagram Roxy.Aster and Facebook. I'm on Facebook and I try not to be on Facebook a lot. I like to watch. And I do answer my messages, don't I, Michelle? Yes, you do. <laughs> so, guys, if you have, please don't ask me on a date. Please do not ask me on a date. <laughs> uh, I will write, it is not a dating site. Hi, I'm Roxy Astor. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so, like Michelle, I'm trying to a question. And Michelle, you could have asked me anything and I would have written back to you. I write back to a lot of people and, you know, I, uh, sometimes I'm, doing hair or I'm doing something in between, but I'll always write back, write back. Hi, how are you doing? Let, you know, it's, you know, a lot of the girls are like that too. So, you know, you guys, you guys oh. keep us in, you keep us yep. going. Mm -hmm. So my last final question said, you said you had a story that you were out here in Oxnard one time. Wrestling. Oh, oh good memory. See, I forgot yes. about <laughs> advantage of being younger than me, Michelle. Very, very good job. <laughs> Okay, so Roxy would always do her little uh, skits like in the glow house with Tiffany. And okay. there was a skit where I had a boxing glove and she was laughing and then I'd go like that and bop her at her head and look at her. And, and I was always known for like my faces, like my eyes and I always like make these funny faces. And Tiffany would have the, this horrific laugh. Okay, so I was always kind of jealous she had her little her, her glow little thing where she would answer the call and remember that it was a uh, advice or something i think so yes do you remember yes. michelle i think so yeah I very think... very fun. okay yes. so i finally and this is after glow because when i when i was filming something in oxnard i was i think eight weeks pregnant and there was a building in Oxnard, I don't remember exactly where, and we filmed where I was finally going to get my, my little skit, and it was about, I was a boxer. And there was a guy that looked like uh, Sylvester Stallone, and you know, dog like Sylvester Stallone, and you know, and I ended up punching him. So you see me going around the building, and it's the worst music in the world. It's like, dun, dun, dun. Okay, so I'm crawling on the ground, and I'm really crawling because they want me to be like, because you're tired after the three runs after it. And I'm ready to like throw up because I'm like pregnant. I'm in the heat. And I'm like, so that was real. So whatever you saw me crawling and, and looking disgusted, I was actually right. had morning sickness. <laughs> oh, wow. And the director's like, yeah, it's good. I even took a bump in the ring. Go. I have no idea why. You know, like, wait, I'm pregnant. Whoa, oh, wait. <laughs> That was a true morning sickness face that I had, and that I had to look like I was actually just dying there, and I was. And that's why you mentioned Oxnard, and that's the only thing I remember about Oxnard is that I <laughs> almost lost it. <laughs> that oh, close to getting my the skit is out there somewhere yeah. too. Roxy, I hope you could be back on the show again, and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, Roxy. Um, your surgery goes let us keep us informed okay yes i will and i'm hoping if i could get some signature from you guys soon i see i always have my i always forget this part if i could get um signatures like you know yeah thank you michelle or something because i'm always blanking out and i've always that had, address i'm going to surprise you with something oh thank you roxy but i got one I more like thing you. for you you ready What's that? yes with Roxy, you better beware, because I'm really strong and debonair. This jet set girl never backs down, because all she wants is the glow crown. That's for you. <laughs> Thank you, Roxy. Have Welcome. a good week. Bye. Bye. Bye.